Hello, every pony. This is Nightlife here, and I shall be bestowing unto you. <sighs> chapter. Nope. Part 2 of Chapter 21 in Fallen Equestria Project Horizons. Yes, that's right, my little ponies. This is getting good. Although I kind of stopped in the middle of a, f of a flashback sequence. Sorry. I'm sorry, but it just sounds like it's such a great spot to end it off on. Like, not till it drove you mad. I mean, how good is that? Anyway, enough lollygagging from me. I know you'll want to get to the story. Oops, hit my mic accidentally. <sighs> Looks like a pen. <laughs> Security was, security were friends with, with security. Thus, my friends were, by default, the children of security mares. Daisy limped into the corner of the schoolroom, where we were being taught our core lessons and security training by the board, burned out, by the board burned out ben, banality of Miss Textbook. Marmalade looked at the cream-colored filly in the corner at the darkened bruises on her face and a twitchy look in her eyes. There were bandages on her side, on her legs, side, and, and flank. Are you okay, Daisy? I asked, looking at the bruises on her cheek and muzzle. Yeah, I got in a fight, she said, sniffing as if it, as if it, were, it were no big deal. Daisy always gets in fights. As security, she was supposed to fight. We, we all were. But I always wondered just who she was picking with, but just who she was picking them with. So what's the teacher? What's so what's teach going? Ugh. So what's teach going on about? She she asked, and and the honey colored marmalade and I looked at each other in concern. Daisy, Daisy never cared what the teacher taught. The Ministry of Awesome and how it was just a bone to th throw into ra Rainbow Dash. Since you never actually did anything, I said softly. Sorry, I asked. She yawned, and we relaxed. Then, duct tape walked by, and the little gray filly looked at the three of us. No, looked at Daisy. Daisy looked at her. What are you looking at? Duct tape shook her, shook her head as she backed away. I said, what, are you, what the fuck are you looking at? I smiled at her in a Bronx accent. What the fuck are you doing here? And duct tape as duct and as duct tape turned to run, Daisy charged her. No, please, I'm sorry. Duct tape begged as Daisy pl plowed through the plowed into the smaller gray filly. And work mouse and proceeded to pummel her. You didn't see anything, you understand? Nothing, you gray pussy. Daisy shrieked as she kicked the, the other filly over and over again, while textbook just looked on with mild, exp with a mild expression of annoyance that her lecture had been interrupted. God damn, that annoyance sucks. Daisy, I shouted in, in alarm, and the honey unicorn jumped as I raced to shove her between myself between her and the fetal duct tape. Marmalade just followed, because that was what she did. She didn't have a sense. So that's what. She didn't have the sense Celeste had given a roach. Still, I shoved my way between them and kicked Daisy's face firmly with my forehooves. That seemed to snap her out of it, enough to make her fall back. Get taped to medical, Marm. The yellow unicorn looked at me, then Daisy, then duct tape, and finally realized I was asking her to do something. She bit duct tape by her mane and dragged her out the door. What is wrong with you, Daisy? I yelled as the, as the rest of us of the class pretended to listen to, to the teacher, because that was safer than listening and thinking. The bandages had fallen away, and I stared at the cuts on in, in Daisy's sides and flank. They'd only been barely healed by the magical bandages, and unless she'd been hiding a horn in her entire life, there was no way Daisy could have made those such regular cuts. Who? How? Now I was the one slammed to the ground. No pony. 
It was an accident. I mean, a fight. That's all it was. She said as she shouted down at me. Don't think about it. Don't ask. Don't wonder. Crawl back into my desk and pretend like it never happened. Agree it was a fight and don't ask who. Agree it was an accident and don't, ima and don't imagine how. Do that and she might forget as well. And you'd be friends. Friendish. Did your... Was all I said. All I got out. She knew, she knew the question. I knew the answer and she tried to shout... To shove every ounce of pain her, of her body into me. Every ounce of her pain into me. And she had a whole lot of it to shove. God damn. Man, he wasn't kidding when he said 99 was dystopian. Everything is shit. I opened my eyes, feeling the bobbing of the boat and hearing the sounds of ponies walking about the deck. You okay? Gloria asked as I stirred. I feel like I got hit by a boat, I muttered, lying there as I feel my heart thunder. I felt bruised from horn to hoof. You did get hit by a boat, the captain replied as she, as she, leaned, de as she leaned on the rear hatch. Didn't I tell you to get below and strap in? The rest of your friends did. You? You ran right to the worst place you could. The captain did not look happy about me breaking the first rule. Seabiscuit, is she okay? I asked as I looked at, at, at the torn skin on my front forelegs. At least my pit bucket saved me from some of the burns. But the pain in my sides, I suspected I was missing, a, I was missing hide there too. The captain's look softened. Yeah, so I won't shoot you for breaking the first rule. Besides, she she added with a grin, I have to admit, there's no sight like going through the fallen towers. I had to agree. I'll be having nightmares about nightmares about it for a while. I noticed that the captain was also showing, uh, also showing raw rope burns and bruises. Normally, I would have waited a few days for the water to subside. The water level was half was half it again was half again as high as it should have been for safe passage. But you folks are in a hurry. Not in that much of a hurry. I groaned momentarily sitting up and regretting it. I fell back onto my, into Glory's hooves with a groan. Where are we? How long have I been out? We're in, we're in Riverside, just below the falls. That crash did more than crush, did more than just crush both of you. It also busted the seal in the bottom. We can patch it, but it'll just, but it'll just take a while. There's not a lot to see here, but you can peek around. There's a finer's village. It's a finer's village, so it should be safe, ish. Safe-ish. I like that word. Not quite safe, but in the, but in the neighborhood. Yeah. I muttered sarcastically. I should. I slowly dragged myself to my hooves. Well. Get me my barding. I love Black Cag, man. I love her. Nah, no, I'm playing. I don't do any crap. The tape on my phone's coming off. Eh. Black Jack, Gore said. You just woke up from passing out after having a ship fall on you. And from your pulse, you've, and from the, and from your pulse, you've taken at least another buck. Why don't you just stay here and do something ra radic and do something radical? Radical? Don't you mean rational? Like rest? I took a deep breath and, and studied myself. Fighting to keep from yelling like a bitch. No. Fighting to keep to keep from hyper from hyperventilating. Nice and slow. Calm. Well, Glory, there's three three reasons I have to go. First, I need to get out there so whatever's so whatever eyes and ears Sanguine and DJ Pwn3 have can see me with can see me or uh, so whatever eyes and ears Sanguine and DJ Pwn3 have can see can see me so he doesn't send that monster pony to chapel. Second, I want I want to find I want to see if there's any pony I can help. Third, and most importantly of all, 
I took a moment, looking at her gravely. I really, really need to go to the bathroom. I'm not hanging my fang off the side of a boat. Ha, <laughs> rat race. Glory took one look at me in, sh in, in shock, and the captain collapsed with laughter. Then seized a pillow and, be and beat me with it until I, I grabbed my bags and fled outside. <laughs> Damn it, Blackjack. After a visit to the town latrine, a ditch that reeked so badly it had it almost had me re reconsidering the boat, I found myself in Riverside, the town of two dozen inhabitants that was built in a horseshoe-shaped strip of shops adjacent to the river. One floating dock made of old empty barrels stretched out to, uh, stretched out to a post at, and the seahorse. The roads north and south were barricaded, and the spark in the park in the middle of the village held planter boxes filled with vegetables and waxy green glass. Grass, sorry. Ugh. I just ate some bread and I'm still kind of getting over it. You know how bread gets like kind of stuck in your throat to where it like makes pressure but it's not that bad but it hurts. Can stop you from talking properly? Yeah. Shops were selling pale sides of smoking fish and slabs of radigator meat. And, an, and at the outdoor butcher shop, I sat. I saw two ponies cutting and chopping up an enormous frog. <laughs> Despite the town size, I got the impression that I had once seen better days. There were apartments above the repurposed stores that had, now had busted windows and were boarded shut. One shop only had some scrap metal, electronics, and 9mm ammo. I couldn't see any signs of families. There was a there was a terrible sense that, at any moment, the last occupants would just fade away, leaving Riverside just another ruin. What happened here? I muttered as I looked at the ponies moving like ghosts around the almost empty shops. Same thing has happened everywhere, miss, an old unicorn mare said as she mended, mended a fishing net. I had to question the sense of a pony who ate something out of that river. Slowly, I walked to her and, start, and started as I realized that she was blind. Her milky eyes staring out at me as her hooves skillfully felt out the tears and her horn, and her horn mended them. Blackjack. Fishy, she replied. Now that made me feel all kinds of strange and alarmed. What? How did you know? My name, it's Fishy, Granny Fishy, nice to meet you, she said with a soft chuckle. Oh, don't, eh. Oh, I sat down across from her. What do you mean, same thing hap happening everywhere? Riverside used to be a nice village. We used to be smack in the middle of the west side ruins. There, were plenty, there was plenty to pick out the countryside, food, safety. But the ruins have been picked clean, mostly. There's more and more raiders, bandits, and reapers. Less folk bringing in less food. So villagers just dwindle away. Death picks off the ones who stay. And there's fewer and fewer boats. This lady... This, this lady bothering you, Mom? A pink mare with a pair of fish on her flank asked as she trotted up. No, thank you, Perch. Granny said with an as she waved the hoof at the mare, who took it between her own and guided her and guided it to her head so Granny could pat her. She was polite enough to ask me about the town. It's those damn dogs that are to blame, Perch said with a stomp. Dogs? I blinked. The sand dogs, the elder unicorn answered. They live underneath the western ruins. Perch clearly had a lot more to say. Stopping her hooves again. And they're a menace. They scavenge the ruins, but they don't trade. And I don't know... And I know, and I know they got some decent salvage in their holes. They got some kind of weird cybernetics that make them too tough for most raiders and bandits. So we have to deal with them instead. Now, that's enough, Perch. Times are tough enough without making things harder for some folks who don't deserve it. Granny said firmly to the young... 
to the younger mayor. But the pink point wasn't listening. You want to help? She said to me, go down to the Riverside Station in th- of, the, of the Sunset Line. Shoot every one of them. And open up the tunnels for, for scavenging. They all turned his place around, no sweat. She said as she lifted up one of Granny's nets and sulked back and, and sulked towards the, ri- the river. The blind elder mare said nothing as she ran her hooves over the, over the over the netting. Please do not mind her. She's just desperate to save her home, the, to save the home she knows. Grandpa, she said as she tugged the nets with her with her horn and hooves. I suspect you feel the same way. You. D- you do? I gave a little nervous smile. No offense, but you don't know where I'm from. Trust me, no pony won't, would want to save that place. Oh? But isn't that where you're going? Or, or, or maybe it's where you've been. Who can say? She said as she ca- carefully tied a hole. I suspect you have a long trail before you reach your home. Uh, my main ting started to tingle as I regarded her. What do you know? She chuckled at the question. No? My dear, I simply mend holes and nets, she replied with a toothless grin with a toothless smile. But I have a sense about you. The past and the future reach through you. Messenger, Arbringer, and Judge. Life in one hoof, death in the other. Which will you decide? Not even the stars can tell. Okay, that just jumped the, creepy, the creepiness factor up by 50 at least. Holy crap. I like this gal. <laughs> P21 and Glory trotted up, the two probably noticing my slightly uneasy look. Glory? Who's this? Glory replied, asked politely. Or is that Blackjack, right? <laughs> a little belated mess up there. Blackjack, who's this? Glory rep- asked politely. Granny Fishy, Gra- she said with a broad smile. She thrust her hoof in the, in the general direction of Glory. Glory took it in her own and gave, a sh- gave it a shake. Ah, Pegasus. Ah, Pegasus. How interesting. How did you get that from a hoof shake? That was them, not me. But still, how the fuck? Fallen Glory, Glory said softly as she glanced back at me. And frowned at the old mare. Did Blackjack tell you? No, I just get a sense of things, she said as she, as she released Glory's hoof and returned the net to the net. Like your name, Fallen. How far have you fallen? I wonder. Have you learned to hate? Have you learned to hate? Have you learned to spite? Have you learned to crave vengeance? If not, how can you tell how how? How can he know how to forgive fallen glory? How? What did you tell her, Blackjack? She asked, clearly startled. I nothing. I just I just met her. P twenty one looked at Granny, spending the net, and looked at me, and cocked a I cocked a brow. What he said? I don't want any creepy mythical mutterings about my fate or destiny. Thank Thank you very much. He backed a few steps away from Granny. Leave me out of it. Oh, don't worry, young buck. Your fate has come and gone. It only begs the question of what happens in the epilogue. The old the old mare said with a lazy wave of her, of her hoof. For some reason, that seemed to bother him more than some cryptic remark. Oh. Oh, my. So his story is over and done. Well, most of it. Then Perch yelled across the square, "Granny, stop with the fortune teller routine and get to the last n- get the last net per- patched up." The blind mare chuckled, and I gave her a skeptic glance. Had all this just been a local a local messing with the rubes? Ah well, fun is fun, but I'd best get back to work," she said. "Don't give an old blind mare's words too much thought." As we walked away, I looked back at her and saw her still. Wearing that lingering old smile. I don't know. I'd give her words a bit more thought, Blackjack. 
<sighs> Blackjack, are you sure? Are you sure about this? P twenty one said as as he moved as we moved through the ruins. It's only one one of my plans, of or it's one of my plans. Of course, I'm not sure about it, but oh, excuse me. But Perch said that if we could deal with the sand dogs, it'd open up the underground tunnels for salvage again. And and you know that there's always time for dealing with rares and bandits. We've got at least three hours till Thrush patches up our boat. So why not do some good while while we're here? I have to wonder how your foes will view, will view your goal, Makune said from the rear. She shed the heavy black lace and veil once we were out of sight, out of sight of the town. Oh, don't get her started on on moral moral, moral relativism. B twenty one groaned. Should we stuck all day? Moral moral whatism. Look, it's simple. We're good. They're bad. That's all I need to know. More, right, until one of them starts crying, the blue bug muttered. Why are four smart ponies being led around by an idiot? Can't be that smart then. I stuck, I said, I stuck my tongue out at him and looked at Rampage. She still wasn't much bigger than a filly, but I wasn't going to pick a fight with her with that chainsaw knife in her jaws. Hey Rampage, are you smarter than me? She spat out her blade and balanced on top of her head. As she said something in zebra to me, a toss of her red curls, and she caught the blade in her jaws with a grin. I'll take that as a yes, I said with a roll of my eyes. The plan was simple: I keep an eye open on my EFS for red bars. Glorwood's got them out. We did not like them and saved the day. My pitbuck, nav my pitbuck navigation tool, already had a toggle set on Riverside. How it knew, I'd never know. Once the dogs were out of the tunnels, the seahorse would hopefully be ready to continue to continue downstream. I just hoped we didn't get lost amidst these ruins. They were unlike anything I'd ever seen. The swampy remains of Flankfurt were nothing compared to these cracked and broken 10 and 20 story buildings that, that loomed over us. Most bore the telltale sign, the, the telltale charrings of firestorms. And the streets were turned, and the streets were litt littered with rubble, smashed and twisted weapons, and of course, bones. Still, a century of scavenging had turned the ruins into a rain into rain drenched sh sh shells, perfect little lairs for predatory ponies. And speaking of which, there were some red bars straight ahead. Oh, blackjack! I gestured to Glory, and she fitted the. The, and she flitted from the blasted out window, from blasted from blasted out window to blasted out window, her gray hide and pale blue barding blending in with both, with both sky and rocks. I had to keep track of her blue bar at times. She scoured the hostels and returned, about nine or ten, and in some old store right around the corner, and the others in a cup. So, about nine or ten, some in an old store right around the corner. And the others in a coffee shop across the street. They've got a sniper on the third floor. I couldn't tell if they're rares or bandits, but they're all armed. Red, it's dead, I muttered, glancing at my pit buck. I imagined the car shuffling in, in my mind, but I wasn't going to acknowledge that pale bastard. If they were armed and hostile, this wasn't an execution. This was trouble, and we were, and we were taking care of it. You know... Blackjack needs to take up a pony who would be an executioner. Because she's a judge. Well, no. She's the security. He's the executioner. All they need to judge, which is glory. Okay, so I'm in front. Glory from above and tagging and tagging that sniper. Rampage mixing mixing it up. Pizza number one, keep your eyes open. And needs persuasion if there, if there's a knot of them. And you? I looked at Lacune and suddenly felt a bit of, at a bit, of, at a bit of a loss. What are you going to do? I'll back you up, she said with a faint smile. Right. That was less specific. That was less than specific or comforting. <laughs> I love what she's gonna do. She's gonna do. 
Okay, don't shoot me, please. I asked with a half-joking smile. I started to yawn, and then everyone exploded. No. Hey, remember how uh, Blackjack's ass said, Why does everything always explode? Right, that was, less than, that was less than specific or comforting. Okay, don't shoot me, please. I asked with a, with a half-joking smile. I started towards the hostel the hostels when Pete Flamon cleared his throat. What? I asked, looking at his sardonic little smile. He stretched out a hoof and tapped the helmet atop my saddlebags. Oh, right. Headshot. Good thinking. I levitated and strapped the, and strapped the helmet in place. Flushing slightly. Okay. Now we we were ready. Were now we now were we ready? We were Dun 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 Hmm Whoa I'm sorry, I read ahead a little bit. I, I strolled down the street as clear as the day with, with Taurus's rifle floating with Taurus's rifle floating ahead of me. Rampage moved like a ponified like a ponified cat. Unnervingly quiet with her No Too far was it with her clanking metal armor. Chloe moved ahead like, like a silent guardian angel while look well while Lacune walked behind me. Where was Pete Twenty where Pete Twenty One was? I had no idea. Laying mines, readying a grenade. I just knew he'd be there. Through the scope, I saw a mare walking from the coffee shop uh, towards the corner of the grocery store. I saw she had sp the spiked armor, the stud off shotgun, and most importantly, the half dozen hooves dangling off the side of her barding. Most of all, I saw the eager grin that split her face, her scarred face, yellow eyes widening in glee at the sight of me. And then I sent her brains out the back of her head with a clean shot through her left eye. Fuck yeah! All hell broke loose. At once, three more ponies rushed out. But... Uh, <laughs> but they had the sense to go for cover behind the piles of rubble. One opened up an SMG. A 10mm Zebra model, if I know my guns. And sprayed bullets down the street of down the street at me. Where the heck had Rayas gotten enough bullets to waste them with, with, to waste them with an SMG? The pistols were a little more accurate, but my barring took the rounds with... with... E huh? Made up word ahead. Equanimity. As I took aim with the rifle and blew the noggin off a mare with the S... off the mare with the SMG. From overhead came the bo came the boom of a rifle round, and the resounding ping, and a resounding ping, glanced 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 off the side of my helmet. Somewhere, I was I was sure P twenty one was thinking smug thoughts. Okay, enough badass stupidity. I had their attention now, so I made for my own cover behind the fallen wagon, as my head throbbed. And then I yawned, and they all swallowed up into my gaping vagina. No. As nice as the rifle was, I just didn't have time to have the time or to fire for messy work. Good thing I had a shotgun. <laughs> she loves her shotguns, don't she? Glory swept sideways, raking the sniper's nest with her beam pistols. There was another loud boom from the sniper, but she deftly twisted clear of the shot. Pirouetted and resumed cooking the sniper with little be with little beams of death. I just waited as Rampage raced towards the two raiders with ten millimeter automatics. The sight of a charging little zebra striped pony seemed to make the hesi them hesitate in amusement. They realized their mistake far too late as Rampage leapt over the rubble and wrapped her hooves around the mare's neck. Then the rip the ripper roared as she saw the head her head clean off in a fountain of blood that seemed to make the remaining raiders stare in awe. No wonder Deus had been able to command these psychopaths. Unfortunately, her awe made her sit a sitting duck for a round of buckshot to the head. Now, what were the rest? 
From the inside of the store spilled the, rema the remainder of the raiders. They had been taking their time, getting their barding and guns ready. Another unicorn came out, spraying Rampage and myself wildly. As the... And this... <sighs> the yawn and a gigantic... Eyeball swept swallowed them all up into a giant abyss. No. And this close in, the shots were, more, were much more effective. I slipped into sides to plant two shot, to plant two neat blasts in her head. Then fired two more into the milling rares behind her. Rampage jumped over the fallen unicorn and slid on a sheet of blood to saw and kick wildly at at the limbs of the raiders as I fired off two more shots and re then reloaded as fast as my horn could manage. Then, then, from the coffee shop, behind them came the purr of a minigun motor. Instantly, my ass began to vibrate <laughs> as the stream of shots started choosing my barding. The five millimeter rounds landed, uh, lacked individual punch, but I knew in seconds those individual rounds would add up to a very holy blackjack. Where is behind me? Where is in front of me? Not good. It was a soft thump, and a moment later, the raider with the minigun was enveloped in a blast that tore, off, that tore off. That <laughs> it was a soft thump, and a moment later, the raider with the minigun was enveloped in a blast that tore off their head, and all four limbs. That what was left of the of the court, what was left collapsed in a bloody heap, that writhed for a few seconds. As two more came rushing from to the door, Peach One emerged like a blue ghost, bit out the stem of the, the stem of a, of a frag grenade and tossed it through. A second explosion and the two and two more red bars vanished. With Rampage already raising havoc inside, I charged in through the door and proceeded to paint the raiders the raiders with, with lead. One had heavy plate me, plate metal armor, but no helmet. Sats already allowed the buckshot to render his head into paste. When the gun was empty, I tossed it into the into my sling rather than waste time reloading. Then grabbed the fallen unicorn's ten millimeter SMG. One raider was taking aim with a hunting with a with a hunting rifle. In a second, I unloaded the twenty five bullets left in the clip into him. His rifle shot hurt, still hurt like still hurt like hell. And then, like that, it was over. There was one red bar back in, in the grocery store, but I didn't see a target. Back room? Unconscious? I'd find out, I supposed. Uh, Lacune walked calmly behind me, her hooves avoiding the stepping in blood. Watch out, there's one more in the back. I looked, uh, I looked at the carapace put on display. I had to find so many of them were striped. There must have been... There must, they must have ambushed a zebra tribe nearby. It explained all of the ten millimeter ammo. The guts dangled like the guts dangled like garlands over the sh over the shelves. I moved towards the rear door that I guess led to the stock room. I paused as I, as I noticed a forlorn bottle of, spoke of sparkle cola sitting in a dead refrigerator. I floated it out, popped off the top, pocketed the cap, and took a drink. Then took. Then continued to the door with the floating bottle on one side, on on one side of the gun, on one side, and the gun and the gun on the other. Carefully, I swung the door open, ready to pop the sets to end the hostilities. There was a nursery. Oh, this was a nursery. I saw the foals lying together inside of some kind of metal pen next to a roll-up metal door. My mutant eyes picked up picked out their shapes. One of them, shake, shaking and sobbing rock, and rocking amid the rest. Hey, it's okay. I said it as I put as I put the gun away. She clutched a little ball in her chest as she sniffled and hiccuped. You're safe now. She looked up at me. She giggled. Her scarred lips slashing, slashed all the way to her ears as she raised her ball and bit off the stem. I stood there as she threw it at me from the keep of dead fillies and colts. I couldn't move. I could only think, play, as I watched the grenade shimmer arc towards me. A shimmering, whitish-purple field appeared around the filly and the grenade. The explosive, the explosive hit it and bounced back just before the fuse ran out. 
The room shook. Uh, part of the roll, part of the roll-up doll blew out, and just and I just stood there. Part of the roll-up door b- blew out, and I just stood there, looking in a daze at the pile of, at the pulped pile of ponies. A voice whispered in my head, "I told you I'd have your back." And I think that's where I'm going to end it for this one. This seems like a very, very good point to end the little segment. So, and I'm sorry for it's so short, but what are you going to do? I got a promise to keep. All right. This has been Night Life giving you part two of chapter 21 of Follow the Equestria Project Horizons. Night Life, out. <laughs>